carving the maxillary first premolar. After making the block of wax or soap, we mark the labial or buckle surface, draw the midline, which will extend to the palatal surface. Step 1. Drawing and carving the labial surface or buckle surface. This is the buckle surface of the maxillary first premolar. The crown is 8.5 millimeters long while the root is 14 millimeters long. If we draw a bisecting line that bisects the crown, notice that the apex of the root is about 1 millimeter distal to the line. The peak of curvatures, both mesial and distal, are at the same level, which is within the middle third. It is about 4 millimeters from the tip of the cusp. The mesial distal width at the cervical line is 5 millimeters, which is 2.5 millimeters from the distal point to the midline and 2.5 millimeters from the mesial point to the midline while the mesial distal width at the widest point of the crown is 7 millimeters therefore it is 3.5 millimeters from the distal point to the midline and 3.5 millimeters from the mesial point to the midline this is the block after drawing the labial or buccal surface now, after drawing the shape on the soap, we cut away the excess areas by a plaster knife or a wax knife, gently, not to cause fracture of the soap. These areas should be removed. This is the block after cutting the buckle surface. Step 2. Drawing and carving the mesial surface. The peak of curvature, labially, is within the cervical third, while the peak of curvature, palatally, is within the middle third. The palatal cusp is about 1 mm below or shorter than the buccal cusp. The buccal palatal dimension at the cervical line is 8 mm, while at the crown it is 9 mm. As you can see here, this point or this shape is the depth of the groove which is covered by the mesial marginal ridge. The depth of the groove from the distance from the depth of the groove to the highest point of the cervical line is 5.5 millimeters and it is also 
away from the peak of curvature labially by 5 millimeters and away from the peak of curvature palatally by 4 millimeters. Therefore, the buccal cusp is bigger and wider than the palatal cusp. A bisecting line which bisects the crown or divides it in half we will find that the depth of the groove is exactly 0.5 millimeter away from the bisecting line. Now after drawing this, this we cut away the excess areas in the same manner that we did with the labial or buccal surface. This is after cutting both the labial and mesial distal surface. As you can see, it's square shape. Step 3. Drawing the occlusal surface and rounding the corners. This is the shape. Notice the difference between the final occlusal surface and the shape we have obtained. The shape is rather angular as you could see here it has a lot of sharp or a lot of sides the mesial slope buccally is longer than the distal slope while palatally the distal slope is longer and more convex than the mesial slope therefore it seems as if the buccal cusp is tilted distally while the palatal cusp is tilted mesially. We could also find that the contact area mesially is small, then there's a concavity while the distal contact area is broad, then there's a convexity to the buccal, oh sorry, to the palatal cusp. Now we have to mark the midline and draw the shape on the block we just carved. These areas should be removed while rounding the corners of the block. This is also done by a wax knife or a plaster knife and carefully doing it from the root to the tip of the cusp or we could start from the cervical line to the tip of the cusp then we do the root in a separate motion.
Now you could see the same shape, very similar to the occlusal surface in the diagram. Broad distal contact area and a small visual contact area.